Hi, I'm going to show you how to trace your image in Inkscape. The first thing you do once you uh, have installed it, is you're going to, uh, it's going to open up to a new document that looks like this. There's only a, there's a lot of tools that you see here, which you're only going to use maybe two or three of them at any given time. First thing is to do file, open, so you can navigate to where your file is at. And I think this is it here. I don't change any of defaults, I just say OK. It does kind of shift around in size, so don't worry about that. Just keep clicking to maximize. Sometimes it comes in super big. When it does, hold the control key down and your mouse wheel um, to get it a good size. I like to have it about this size to work with. You click on it. There's three steps to tracing in Inkscape. The way that I do it. I highlight it by clicking on it and I go to path, trace bitmap. I deselect smooth and stack scans and I'll just click remove background and live preview so that I can take a look at it. It defaults to a threshold of 45 and it says at that number that you should have a good trace. Well obviously we look at this and it's not a good trace. So you have to play with these numbers up and down. When you go down, decrease the numbers, the image gets lighter. And this is what you want it to look like, almost like a coloring book uh, image, except for the fact I don't like that the A, the V, and the E looks like it's just a bit too white. So I'll go up a little bit on it. Um, but when you increase the numbers, things get darker. When you decrease it, they get lighter. And so this is at 36. So I'm just going to go up just a little bit to see. Now I'm getting some fuzzy stuff in there, spots that I don't like. So I'll go back down to this. Looks like 36 is going to be maybe a good number. So you click OK from that preview because you want it again to have an outline that looks like a coloring page that you would get crayons and color it in. That's the look you want here. And what's happened is it has now traced it and it's behind your original or color image. So I'm just going to click on it move the color to the side. Well, I like to have mine this way. So I can click off of the preview. I don't need it anymore. I'm clicking off of this snapping. It, it tends to want to help me uh, place things, and I like to do it uh, manually. So I'm just going to click off of that. And I'm using this slider just to move the screen over some. just want to move this out of the way. I work with the image inside of what they call the canvas or the design area, this rectangle. And so what happens now is it looks like I got a pretty decent trace off of it. The next thing that you want to do since you're going to layer it uh, when you cut all the pieces out, and I see some little dots and spots and stuff in here. So I probably could have gone down to say 35 instead of 36. But that's just something you have to play with to determine your own preferences. But some of these little spots, um, if I zoom in, you'll see what I'm saying. Here, one here, one here, maybe there. We'll get rid of those. Uh, but lowering that threshold from 45 down to, I was at 36, maybe 35, maybe 34 would have gotten rid of some of those uh, spots. If you go too low, then these letters start to uh, become uh, too white uh, and you don't want that. So you just have to play with the numbers. Anyway, once you have traced it, the next step to it is to break it into pieces. You want to, because it's all one piece now, you want to break it apart. And so you click on it and you go back to path and you say break apart. Everything turns black and that's exactly what you want it to do because that means that everything has traced properly and all of these little dotted boxes you see are actually pieces that you're going to be cutting with the machine and layering them. And you can see right here all these other little spots that I told you that I'm going to be clicking and uh, erasing. So once it's all black, then you can say that you've done a good job, click off of it somewhere, and now your job is to start to add color to it so that the final trace will look like the original. And you can even, you can click on it 
and kind of determine where these uh, pieces are uh, by just clicking on it. And this dropper tool, I like to click on it with the area highlighted on my trace. I'll come over here on the original because I'm trying to get those colors. Uh, and then I go back to the select in order to start over again and select in another color. Now, if I can't remember where all these pieces are, one little trick is to click on this particular tool. It says edit path by nodes. You're not going to do any of that. This tool, when you move it around, it shows you where those pieces are. So it takes away the guesswork. So now I'll click here and I know that that's white and this is the color palette at the bottom so now I can keep moving and I think that's the eye so I can click white there uh, let's get a teeth I clicked on one I'm holding the shift key down I'm clicking on the other and now I'm going down here to the palette and I'm clicking it and let's see looks like I've got some more I can color and that's really all you're doing at this point is just clicking and coloring it really doesn't matter what the colors are because what you see here may not be the actual color that you're going to feed into your uh, your cutting machine but anyway that's just what we do so um, just trying to get right there to finish that up and we have the tongue here so if I click there have the tongue, the eyes, and I'm just double checking as I go to make sure that I have everything pretty much on it that is in color. So the next thing that I want to do is to get these outlines, these offsets. And so this is the only time that I guess it can get a little tricky. You use the select tool, which is just basically to select things. I showed you a shortcut in using this edit node tool just to move it around to see if there's any other pieces that you may have forgotten or where they are going back to the select tool but the next one that you will probably use is this little paint bucket and don't think of the paint bucket as coloring things that's what we use this palette down here for think of the paint bucket as if it's a, uh, a bucket filled with uh, paste or glue because we're going to copy from the original and we're going to paste it onto your trace. So I'm going to click on the paint bucket and these are some numbers up here that you will tweak them but generally I try to have mine at around 10 and 10 but let's see what we do. So what I'm going to do with this paint bucket is I'm basically pouring in paste because I'm copying it. I'm going back to my select tool <clears throat> so that I can move to the next step. So the next thing I want to do is to drag this over here and position it because in essence what I'm doing is pasting it onto this lion or this beaver, I'm sorry. And the reason that you see some white around it that really should not be there is because when I click on this paint bucket I needed to tweak this and what the threshold says how much of this do I want it to pick up and the gross shrink is how close to the line and so my gross shrink uh, I you know is all in, in tweaking it and that's why you see some of the white that's in here so I'm good with my threshold, but my gross shrink, I need to increase it. And so I will just go back to the select tool. I'm going to click on just this trace here. I'm going to hit the delete key and do it over again because now I've made some adjustments. So now let me click this time and see if my adjustment gets me a little bit closer to uh, the beaver and it looks like it might if I get it positioned just right here. Yes, so you have less white space in there. And now that I've done that, um, it's kind of taken its shape except I've got to, uh, I have, let's go ahead and make it that color so that 
you can see where we are a lot better here. So now it looks like we need to pick up this color that goes around the word beaver and we should be done with the trace on this. So I'm just clicking off of it because I want to work on this original over here. So I'm going to go back to the paint bucket and now I want to try and get this offset and let me just go back here. Um, what I want to do is zoom in and I'm going to grab the tail of it because I wanted it to do all of it. When I just clicked in that one spot, it only did that one spot. So now that it's highlighted, I'm going to click on my select tool because I want to go back uh, to my uh, trace over here, which I'm going to paste it. So now I need to position it where it goes. And of course, you will spend more time getting the proper position on it. And I'm just going to uh, click here, click on the color. So as you can see, and I keep returning back to my select so that I can do the next step in it, that I'm looking halfway good except for I need to pick up some color here uh, and the insides of it. And so in order to get that, again, I need to zoom in. And so again, you will see with this one, there are some white gaps that's in there. But those adjustments are made when you click on the paint bucket and the threshold is fine. I probably need to go up on this sum or down on this sum. That's the thing, and I can put this, change this to uh, none. <clears throat> but um, now I need to get inside. So I'm going to click, hold down my shift key, click. Shift key is still down, holding it down. I'm trying to get all of these at one time so I can paste them at one time. Sometimes you can do that, sometimes you can't. And let me slide this over. Because some areas will will trace better than others. So I have all of them now. I'm going to release the shift key, click on my uh, select, and it select it grabbed all of them. So so now, let me shrink this down just a little bit. And I'm just going to drag these and try to position them uh, in place. And while it's still highlighted, I'm just going to use this dropper and click here. So the only areas that it looks like I'm missing something is right around the... this part of the V looks like. So that's the only part that I have left to do. So I'm just going to zoom in because it just makes it so much easier to grab that part of it. Get my paint bucket tool and I'm going to go inside the V so that I can hopefully, and I went too far in, so I'm just going to do the undo to be able to get just that part and I got that part, hold the shift key down, and I just want this little tip right there, and that's not enough of it. So, I, and that's why I don't do it all at one time. So I'm only going to do this part and go back to my select, and I'm going to select this, and I'm going to bring it over here. Went down some. over and I'm going to go ahead and change the color for there and with this little piece here I wasn't able to get it along with this piece so now I'm going to I'll go in zoom in really really close on it and use the uh, paint bucket and this time I'll be able to get just that piece going back to my select tool and I'm holding the control key down just to zoom back out of it and slide this over and zoom in just a little bit more and I'm just dragging this piece who was it at? Um, 
looks right here on the edge, I think. There, and let's give it some color. Now let's zoom out. And this is the original, and this is the trace. And that's the only way that you will be able to pick up all of these colors like that, these offsets. I just All I did was highlighted all of them, just, just drew a box around all of it. And now I'm going to go to Object and Group. So I have it all grouped together. And I'm going to save it now as a SVG, which is, uh, well, one of the things that I like to do is I like to have a, a, a picture of my uh, image. So I'm going to use my snipping tool just so I have a picture of the image. <clears throat> and Beaver's already set. So there we go. I'll just replace it. So now I have a picture of the image that I can post in the group so that you can at least see what it looks like because now we have to zip them. So I'm ready to go. Now I can delete the original because I'm satisfied with my trace. Go to File, Save As. It defaults to Inkscape. You want to click on that little down arrow and select Plain SVG. And that's all it is into saving uh, an SVG file. And from this point, you just need to zip it and upload it. So um, hopefully, you know, you'll be able to follow me. I know for, you know, the first couple of times trying to work with the paint bucket, it takes some tweaking those tools and moving the number. And sometimes just one number can make a big difference. So thank you for uh, watching. And let's see if I can get to the bottom of my screen here to be able to end it.